Okay, so day one. This week I've got two clients on a private expedition training weekend, well, week. Uh, so they came to me with a specific set of requests about what they wanted to learn and what they wanted to work through, so mostly around expedition skills, uh, while camping in different environments, navigation, some safety things, and just to sort of polish their existing skills. So. We're out here, it's the middle of August, so we're in North Wales, and we're starting off with two days at kind of our base camp, which is where we run a lot of our open courses. If you've been on one of our courses, you know where I'm talking about. Um, so it's relatively luxurious. Um, first of all, I can bring the car up, which means that sort of expedition style camping from a vehicle is much more luxurious than backpacking because it means I can carry things like heavy cooking pots and Dutch ovens and a camping chair and carry dozens of litres of water all of which are things that you'd have to pack in or sort out when you got there so we're here for a couple of nights and then we're moving to the mountains and we're going to move to a backpacking while camping sort of phase so I've given them the task um, once we've arrived and gone through a few safety things and sort of shown them the lay of the land, literally, uh, I've given them the task of getting, finding a place to put up their shelters um, and light a fire for me. This is now several hours later. We have gone through various things around navigation and route planning and all sorts of classroom stuff around the campfire. But now I'm coming over to see one of the guys, Wayne, and see how he's put up his shelter for the night. DD Jungle Hammer. Mm -hmm. Three and a half by two by eight, half on top. So yeah, I've just put a little internal ridge line up there for me. Plus it's with some water shedding. I'm hoping it's good enough. So that's good, so that's about what? A metre and a half, two metres longer than you are? No, a metre and a half maybe. Yeah. Plenty long enough. And then the same as me. You've got Prusiks on a on the ridge line. Yeah. And various suspension systems. That's just an elastic one just to hold the centre up. Yeah. How, how many times have you slept in a hammock? About half a dozen. What do you think of it? I quite like it. It's just it's just getting the warmth underneath. Yeah. So I've got the the, the expert down mat inside there because mm. the under quilts I just can't get it. It, it get a tight spot and it's just cold in the night. So. Yeah. It's the same problem I have. I don't I don't get on with hammocks. I think it's something to do with me and my physiology. But I just prefer to sleep on the ground. Plus I've yet to fall out of the ground. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've not fallen out of it yet, but I did sleep on it before I came on this course. I did sleep on it on the floor and used it as a bivy bag with poles holding the tarp yeah. and things to try that just in case I had to. Uh, and it wasn't that comfortable. No. I think I've slept, I've, I've had bivy bags before and I've slept quite well in bivy bags. Mm. This was one of your, because we're heading to the mountains after a couple of days here, this was one of your options, wasn't it, for yeah. sleeping in the mountains? Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, see. So We've got a big storm forecast for tonight with lots of rain, so we'll see how it goes. But I'd be happy sleeping in this. Looks, this looks alright. It's quite comfy. And I keep the weight down with a, an over quilt as opposed to a sleeping bag. Right. Because the, the, the mat, the down mat, is warm enough. And I might have some just base layers on. Have and you weighed the whole thing, so sort of the, the tarp and the hammock and everything? Yeah, so the tarp and the hammock uh, comes to about 2.9 kilos. Right. Um, I think I include the expert mat with that as well. Should well, be. if you're still here in the morning, we know it worked. Yeah, <laughs> not so good. If you, try and f if you fall out in the night, try not to make a noise, yeah? <laughs> I sort of put my bag underneath. It's half of it, stuff like that. Mike, where are you sleeping tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping under this lucky beast. What is it? It is a tarp. 3x3 three three DD Superlight. Um, 
it's, a, it's like the skinnier version of mine, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, well, just sort of what's your setup underneath? You've got a hammock under there, haven't you? Yeah, it's a front line, DD front line hammock. Um, I like so it's slightly it. different. This is the, the, his is the jungle, isn't it? Yours is the front line. I think so, yeah. yeah. So, um, it's jungle or super light he's got, I think. So, just the ridge line through the top mm -hmm. there. Uh, carabiner on the uh, on the middle so that you can just take these off and twist it around and get whatever, you know, if I want to go into diamond. Um, just have my wash kit and stuff here because it doesn't matter if it gets wet. And then um, an internal ridge line for stuff you want to dry out if it's raining. You've got a floor as well. Yeah, I'm kind of a, a bit of a wimp like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a neat freak. Yeah. You like having a floor? Yeah. Um, Generally because it's easy to lose things, I think. Hmm. And it's, uh, somebody once said to me that some people like to go into the jungle uh, and into the forest, but they want to see it hermetically sealed. And he said that as if it was a bad thing, and I thought, yeah, that, that sounds a bit like me. What's the t-shirt? Um, there's a guy called Shug, and um, he's a Canadian, I think. Uh, Canadian, Minnesota way? Is that Canada? I think they kind of sound the same. Yeah. There's a lot of Minnesotans and Canadians angry with Very us now. Very angry right now, yeah. But um, he's just a... Very good videos on hammock camping if you're new to it and you want mm. some clues. But he's also uh, very, he's an acquired taste I think. Uh, you either love him or you hate him, he just he just makes me laugh. So uh, he's got all sorts of kind of little phrases and stuff like that. So if you carry on videoing throughout the few days, I'm sure there'll be a few of them coming out. <laughs> going towards that tree at the moment, so shall I try and get it around a bit? Yeah, just yeah. be aware of the branches above as well, so when it comes down, is it going to snag on anything or spin to one side? So if I come in and try and go a bit further... Right, which way? You're close. Which, everybody's out the way and I run in. So I don't know if you can hear me, let alone see me. You know. Let's turn the lantern up a bit. Let's have a bit more light. So this is the end of day one. As you can probably see, I'm in bed. I'm in my bivy bag, under a tarp, in a very, very heavy rainstorm. Um, it's been an easy, light day. Um, most of the day has been around discussing what we're going to do for the next rest of the week, just settling into being in camp and navigation skills and sort of classroom navigation skills, so uh, how the UK grid system works and grid references and latitude and longitude and orientating the map and contours and symbols and bearings and magnetic north versus true north versus grid north and declination deviation and things like that as well as just some coaching on everything from managing a fire to make sure it's at the right temperature and cooking in the right way at the right time and um, for cooking at the right time and a few other things so these guys are both competent uh, so far but nothing has really been outside of their skill zone or uh, they haven't struggled with anything because well, they've, they've both been on uh, Paul, Paul Kirtley's uh, Elements, Elementary, sorry Paul, um, his five day course and uh, one of the guys has done uh, the Axe Crafter course as well so they, they've, they've come from a good instructor, they've already had good experiences so it's nice working with people and sort of who want to come and learn but they're already, they're already quite good at things, that's always a nice uh, moment. So, yeah, I don't know if you can even see me now, the lantern's dying down. There we go. So that's pretty much it. It's been a short-ish day with 
not a great deal happening or there's not a great deal of physical activity but we've got a few days of that coming up so I'm going to see if I can get to sleep in this really heavy rainstorm yeah well, it is Wales after all alright, last star morning so it's uh, day two now and I've just come to check on my sleeping bag and bivy bag that are drying out from last night um, just a bit of condensation from sleeping in a fairly <laughs> inbreathable bivy bag and being fairly sweaty so it's um, just airing out there on the, one of the paracord lines behind me it was not the best of nights for me uh, I got attacked by slugs in the middle of the night <laughs> so I spent most of the night uh, fighting off slugs so I think I might even though I don't like them, I might retreat to the hammock tonight. Um, today is mostly about just getting ready for the mountain part of the expedition and looking through different equipment choices for tents and stoves and that kind of thing. So that's what we're doing now. Cook kits, stoves, gas versus meths versus other options. Yeah, so we'll see how we go. Bye. Okay. Yeah. So what have you got, Wayne? So I've got... BRS stove, a small diddy one, it was only £11. Amazon, titanium. Yeah, it looks like a copy or sort of possibly even the same thing as the fire maple ones or the alp kit ones. I think they're all it's, they're all kind of the same thing, but they all, it's, yeah. a, it's a really nice folding design, Box. really lightweight. And then the snow peak titanium cup. Yep. Just to pack it in. Mm -hmm. yeah, it can go in the bottom. Little GSI pot grubber. I like that. I've not seen that before. I do like that, yeah. It's, it's like those shark ones that you get at the, it, yeah. the kitchen. That goes What's in that? there. The pot it's grubber. Pot grubber. Yeah. I've looked at those and spurned them. <laughs> and then what will be either a jet boil or a gas system, and that goes in there. And then that's it. And I've got my titanium spoon. Mm. Okay. A little spare stove, which is a pocket rocket lip off if I need it, but I'll probably leave it. Yeah, we'll have three stoves between us, so you yeah. can probably use that. Uh, and that's it, and that'll save me some considerable weight considering what I was going to take. Yeah, good, easier than an axe and a saw and a fire seal that's and right. fire lighting kit, <laughs> that's isn't right. it? Yeah. <laughs> just come out of a very dark woodland to a very bright field on the edge um, and the guys behind me are just doing some sort of map orientation practice so we've got the Cluidian range behind me uh, Molvamai and the Vale of Cluid and Rithin down there and Denby up there and just having a look around and sort of getting used to setting the map and identifying features and bearings and that kind of thing. Uh, the weather is fantastic right now but it's going to be a little bit mankier tomorrow. Um, it's going to be we have quite a bit of rain I think so we're going to switch the plan around. The plan was to do Wednesday to Friday in the mountains but we're going to do Wednesday local to here, uh, stay low uh, below the storm and just do some micro nav in the fields in the valley here and then head to Snowdonia on Thursday for a night out then. So, and I think we're about to be attacked by cows, aren't we? Yeah, we'll see how long we can last before we get trampled by cows. Anyway, bye. Works, doesn't it? It works. <laughs> so it's day three. Uh, we've walked out of the forest, we've walked a few kilometres down into the valley, and now we're walking down uh, the side of the Avon Fluid. Uh, we're just on the edges of Rithin, so this is the micro-navigation part of the day. Uh, 
we're really looking at really fine navigation skills so things like attack points and pacing and bearing and aiming off and all these weird and wonderful little techniques you can employ to navigate down to 10 meter accuracy in the mountains which is what we'll be doing tomorrow so we're walking down into town uh, do a bit of a resupply and then walk back into the hills and into the forest we might go to the pub maybe So this is day four and we've changed location. We've driven over to Snowdonia, we're now in the mountains. Mountains. So the guys are behind me, we're doing some the same kind of navigation in different terrain. So this is based around mountain stuff and we're heading up there to wild camp at a place they've chosen and uh, yeah we're looking at not just navigation but also movement skills, river crossings, uh, we did quite a bit on equipment choice and layering this morning and yeah we're just sort of bringing it all together to make a real mountain journey so that's what we're heading to now but it's quite nice here. I think actually I prefer this to the forest just Although lighting a fire here is a bit harder. Yeah, I quite like it here. So they were using bearings and pacing with the calculations for ascent as well to get them to the right place. So they said about 13 minutes. 13 minutes 20 we hit this stream and that just above my thumb there, that's where I wanted them to be and wanted them to get to and that's where they are. What they're trying to do now it somehow because I'm being mean and I'm not just going to give them the answer because that's not training that's just giving them the answer smile for the world away how's yours going all set up man it's good are you happy in your happy place I'm happy yes oh no I've got somewhere to sleep it's going to be warm I've got somewhere to cook that's good My massively the orange, orange tent. tent. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like to smell? Well, I like to call Prisons. it. The, I call it the Donald. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not much more going there. Yeah. Wayne, have you made a cup holder? <laughs> it's a natural rock formation. <laughs> <laughs>
So I did want to uh, stay up and do all sorts of witty things to camera, um, but the clouds started to roll in over that hill and over that hill, and it started raining. So yeah, I think <laughs> it's half past eight at night. I think I need to uh, get into my tent and maybe have some food and then go to sleep uh, because yeah, early start tomorrow, possibly some rain and maybe a storm tonight. So we'll see what happens. Good night, everybody. Mm, rehydrated 900 calories. So this is the last bit of the trip, I'm the first up and everyone else is getting breakfast and packing things down so I've come over here for a wander. So this is where we slept. And it's not that bad actually is it? area where we camp for at least some rocks and hummocks behind me uh, practicing more advanced micro navigation and navigating between ring contours and contour lines and I've just given them a task of navigating from this ring contour that one down to a spot that I pointed out on a map yesterday so we can see bringing together how they're route planning and navigation comes together. Are you confident, Wayne? I am now. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a bit of a think and now you're confident. I'll see when I get further up the We'll see. And that was pretty much the end of that film because the battery on the GoPro died. So <laughs> the end of it is that they found all the navigation points. We went through, did some more training, found our way back down to the valley, drove back out. Found a good place that did pizza and coffee, and then yeah, spent the rest of the afternoon reviewing their notes, reviewing what else they could do, and just trying to sort of consolidate what we'd been through that week. So I just wanted to finish the film off, and this is actually over a week later. Uh, I'm on a the first day off I've already had in a couple of months. So it's the last weekend in August, and I'm not in the mountains. I'm right next to the sea, which is why I'm wearing my... Fantastic neoprene coral boots and a 20 year old ex army hat. And I'm actually in front of this place, which looks like sort of a, a setting for 28 days later or something, where the, the cottage where they end up after they've left London and all the zombies behind. We've canoed out here. It's uh, an island in the middle of an estuary in North Wales only accessible by boat or at very low tide you can walk out here uh, this whole place has actually just come up for rent so if you know what I'm talking about well you know what I'm talking about but yeah we've come out here and I say we hello. say hello to the people of the internet hello to the people of the internet excellent this is the thing about navigation skills and expedition stuff and just being able to look at somewhere on a map and work out how to get there safely and how to deal with 
the problems that are likely to come up and how to look after yourself because it gets you to places like this which is to be honest, not a bad place to spend on a weekend in the summer so that's an estuary and then we've got the Hrunog mountain range over there and then looking back towards the Moilerwinds and uh, Blenna Fistinjog and then sort of that way is towards the Podomatic and this is a little private island which we've canoed out to. So yeah, that's it. If if bushcraft is your thing or wilderness skills, uh, then it goes far beyond axes and knives and fire and that kind of thing. You've really got to look at navigation skills, expedition skills, just knowing how to find a safe place to put your shelter up in different environments. It's more than just woodland and it's more than just nice chestnut coppice woodlands in Sussex and Surrey where bigger bushcraft names in the UK have made their home because they're fantastic places but there are other environments out here in the UK and our international viewers will know your places don't always look like nice coppiced sweet chestnut woodland so there's a whole range of techniques you can look at and it's not just about copying one guy you see on YouTube or following one person who's got a lot of followers. Go out and try and find things to do around where you are and develop your skills for different environments. You don't have to go to forests and look for places to set up with a fire and a tarp and a bivy and do things that way. You can go and wild camp in the mountains where it's not legally permitted in most areas of England and Wales but you can get away with it if you're respectful and you arrive late and leave early so yeah it's there's a whole range of adventures out there you don't have to be limited to woodlands and forests because you feel that's what bushcraft is and if bushcraft exists at all as a term it includes things like this it includes being able to look at an island on a map look at the tides work out when to get there paddle out here using the right equipment we've got safety equipment we've got radios and throw lines and things to deal with emergencies if they go wrong but things aren't going wrong because we plan properly we know what we're doing and now i'm going to sit here eat a sandwich and drink a coffee on an island yeah, it's not bad bye